Statistics and Excel, Confidence Intervals, Binomial Distribution Survey, Example Number 2. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get realistic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building. Looking at confidence intervals, binomial distribution type situation once again. This one being a little bit different, however, because we're going to have a different confidence level and the yes side will be the high side. Yes is about 85% versus the 15%, but it will be similar in scenario in that we're going to imagine that we want to find information about a large population, but we can't test every item within the population. Therefore, we're going to take a sample. That's our strategy that we have seen many a time at this point, hoping that we can apply the findings found from the sample to the larger population. Two typical methods used, one being hypothesis testing, two being confidence intervals. Hypothesis testing lending itself to situations where we think we know what that middle point is, such as if it says on a bag of peanuts, how many average peanuts are in the bag of peanuts. We think we know what that middle point is. We're thinking that we construct our graph around that middle point. Then when we take our sample, we want to see if the results of the sample are far enough away for us to reject the original hypothesis. However, if we don't know what that middle point is, that would lend us to a scenario of confidence intervals, in which case the sample that we take will be the middle point, and then we're going to construct our interval around it in some way, shape, or form, which we could still do with a hypothesis testing concept by basically saying, well, what if the actual amount, the actual middle point was out here, that would be my hypothesis, and I got a result over here, then would that result be far enough away for me to reject the hypothesis? And I could ask that question, hypothesizing every point around the, the point that we got, which means that we would get an interval by taking like kind of peak to peak around it. But it's easier kind of to think about the middle point around our graph being here, and then constructing, say, some type of bell curve, possibly using a normal distribution if we have the capacity to do that, or possibly using T distributions in certain situations, possibly if we don't have the, the uh, standard deviation of the population, for example. So that's the general idea. Okay, practice tab has, has pre-formatted cells, so you can kind of fill in the, the practice problem with less formatting, but we'll build this from scratch with the blank tab. We're going to start by laying down our baseline formatting, just like making a song. We're going to lay down the beat, lay down the bass, baby, bass, bass, baby. We're going to then say this is going to be currency, 
let's say this will be negative numbers bracketed i'm going to remove the dollar signs to start off with no decimals we'll add the decimals as needed i will typically make it bold you don't need to make it bold but it's useful to do that when i'm presenting because it might be easier to see in a screencast confidence intervals i'm just putting a header on hope i'm not sure i'm spelling it right hopefully i will proper portions this is not a spelling class uh i will try to use spell check though uh uh to fix any problems if i if i get to that and then we're gonna say let's go home tab font group we'll make this black and white not red that's too dramatic black and white we're gonna then go to the i'm just gonna copy this stuff over which is kind of cheating because i said i was gonna build it from a blank sheet but you can make these if you wanted to uh, by just saying uh, the formula you can simply uh, if you want to make that formula you can go to the symbols hit the drop down I like to ink it in you can do that even with a mouse and just type it in here or you know put it in here and then when you mess up you can like circle it oh not that way that's not how you do it let me I can erase it and then I could circle it and then it gives me like different options and so on so you can put that in there this is just a text box which is just giving us our scenario which is just going to be insert uh, text box here now we're looking at a, a binomial uh, type of situation and that means there's only two results that could happen so it'd be like a coin flip you only have two two results a survey where it's just yes or no did you like it or did you not like it which is what we're doing here we're imagining once again our platforms this time the anime platform i'm not advertising for them or anything i'm just saying this is just my i'm just making these numbers up people okay but this is going to be crunchy rule which is an anime platform versus the other platforms uh, and so that's going to be our scenario, which again, I'm just kind of making up. Uh, but if it wasn't binomial, then you can imagine that, that we would have multiple responses. Like if it was heights or lengths or something like that, if it was heights, you would expect the responses to be five, four, five, ten, six, two, and so on and so forth. With a binomial, there's only two possible, uh, responses would be the general idea which changes our situation a little bit because now we take the average of those two which is basically the proportion of the one that we're looking at uh in our case we got the yeses and nos in essence for our survey we have a similar concept that we would like to be able to use kind of like the central limit theorem uh to approximate a bell curve even though the actual data we're getting is not in essence going to be bell curve because it's just going to be a histogram if you did the histogram it would only have two columns so if we imagine that we we took all possible combinations of the population then that would tend towards a bell curve we would need the standard deviation of that and that in concept will be approximated with like this part of the formula which is a little bit different if it was not a binomial distribution okay that said we're going to build the behind the scenes stuff that we know which uh, is not known in universe because this is going to be what we're imagining to be the actual population versus the 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 survey that we're taking which gives us a portion of the population so let's imagine we have yes or no's the question do you like uh crunchy roll versus the other media platforms and we're going to say which is the anime platform and we'll say this is the count now we're going to say that we'll imagine now i'm trying to build and say i would like to build a sample data set of a population that has basically 85 percent that say yes versus 15 percent that say no how could i construct that so that i can then take a random sample from it so i can't i can't really just like do random numbers because it's not evenly distributed between the yeses and the nos so what i'm gonna so same strategy we did last time i could just say well i want to make the population about 85 15. i'm going to percentify these to recognize home tab number percentify to recognize and then i'll sum it up here sum it up 
and then we're gonna say the population I'll imagine is 1,000 which isn't a huge population but we're gonna generate the numbers and that should be enough for us to do our practice problem so if I take the actual 85 percent times 1,000 and then 15 times a thousand so we're imagining the actual population uh, has 850 out of the thousand 85 percent liking the crunchy rule versus the 150 uh, that are disliking which is way higher than the other platforms I'm imagining I don't know I'm just making these numbers up it's probably because by the way because they're not giving us like activist like propaganda stuff in the movie or maybe they are but I don't know what like Japan's activist stuff are so I don't really recognize it so I'm like whatever it looks like just a normal story to me and I don't feel like I'm being manipulated and so and that's so I'm that's where I'm at on it I don't know that's where the, obviously the population is feeling that way because that you could see that the, 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 the numbers here it's in the numbers okay so then we're gonna say that this is gonna be now I'm gonna make this black and white or red because this is not known in universe this is like the actual population thinks but it's a silent majority and and the silent majority doesn't what doesn't talk for some reason they don't like actually express their opinion because people get mad at them when they do that so they have so we're going to say then this is going to be home tab let's make that format paint that over here all right so now Oh, let's put some borders around this home tab font group I'm gonna borderize it okay all right so now uh, let's I'm gonna do a count of 1,000 we'll make our sample now let's do a count of one two I'm just gonna make a thousand so I can see that there's a thousand I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it down because that's not too many numbers so I can just drag it down it looks like a lot of numbers but because we've had uh, Excel can kind of go down there pretty quick otherwise I would use a sequence function to do this but I almost think this is actually faster than the sequence function if you if you have less than like a couple thousand as a general rule and then we're gonna say the sample now how do I get a random sample that's gonna be generated here well first I'm just gonna put my 850 yeses versus 150 no's and then think about how I can shuffle it like a deck of cards so I'm just gonna say this will be uh, the, the yeses I'll just type it in here this time yes and I'll copy that I'm gonna bring that down to the uh, to 850 so goes all the way down to 850 uh, I probably could have copied it down but right here and then I'll paste it and then control shift down then the nos are going to be the rest nos are the rest and i think i could just double click that down boom and the nos will populate so there we have the proper numbers but they're not properly shuffled now now we got to shuffle the deck so we could do that with a random number generation so i could say let's use the random number and say equals rand tab and just give me a random number which gives me a very long randomized decimal which I can copy down and then I could make this into a table or use my filters to then shuffle the random numbers which would then shuffle these uh, these over here so that we would have an 8515 that are shuffled around uh, the other way I think it's easy it's actually easier to do is to just when I take my sample use an index function to take a random uh, set of numbers from over here so that's what I'm going to uh, try to do here so let's say let's say I go make this black and white home tab font group let's make this black white let's center it let's select this whole thing and say control shift down and make that red because they don't know about it in universe this is the actual population the silent you got the silent majority that just doesn't like talking they just don't like saying stuff because so then we're gonna say home tab then we're gonna format paint this over here then we're gonna take the sample well let's double check our data so I'm gonna say uh, the pop data 
Let's just double check that it's still coming out to the right numbers. Let's make this black, white. So I can do the count equals the count tab. And notice I'm gonna count the, let's count these, which means I can't count with that one. I gotta count with an A because it counts the alphabet. So it's just gonna count everything with something in it, but it doesn't need to be a number. And then enter and there's 1000 of those. And then let's do the mean of the pop, pop mean, which should be the same as, as this, unless something weird happened. So I'm gonna say then the pop mean is the average of the sample, control shift down, enter. Oh, hold on a second. Wait, wait, that's not, I can't do the pop mean. What I, what I could do is say the count, the count of yes, versus the count of no, just to double check that. So let's check that equals to count if tab. And I wanna choose this criteria, control backspace. And so I wanna choose that and count it with the criteria if it says yes. Let's pick it up over here and then enter 850. That looks correct. Count nose. And then I could say equals the count if tab these numbers control shift down control backspace and then comma if it's a no and i should get the 150 so we get the 150 there so that looks like the the data looks good let's go ahead and make that red white all right so now let's get to the actual problem that they know in universe so they're gonna say uh, so they're going to say, we're going to take a sample. We're going to take a sample and they're just going to ask people, do you like Crunchyroll? Cause no one likes our other platforms cause they, they think they feel like they're being manipulated with propaganda stuff. But do you like Crunchyroll? Cause maybe you don't know about their, their profit. So, and the, and so that's what we're asking. So I'm going to take a rent. So I want to take these and take a random number from here. So I'm going to use an index function equals index tab. And then we'll take this whole thing, control shift down, control backspace. I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard to make it a uh, absolute and then comma. And we're going to then say that we want the, uh, the random between so you're going to take this area pick random between the first row or which is the bottom which is going to be one not this one it's counting from here to the end and there's a thousand of them to one thousand and then we'll close it up and enter okay we found a typo i think it did it right okay i'm going to count that a hundred times down which I should be able to get to because it's going to see, see I'm at two right here. So instead of having like this count column to help me out, I'm just going to go down till I get to 101 on my columns. So if I copy this down just to see it's doing what I want it to do, let's copy it down. I'm looking at the columns to the left till I get to 101 Dalmatians. No, these are not Dalmatians. Whenever I hear 101, I have to say Dalmatians. This is not about 101 Dalmatians. So let's go ahead and make this border. I'm going to make this blue now. We'll put the this color and then I'm going to go to standard color wheel. Make it that blue. You can use whatever blue you want. But the blue is indicating that now we're in universe. So they took the survey. These are the results. They look somewhat random. Let's test it out to see how random they are. Let's make a skinny P select in this one. I'm going to copy format, paint it to the P to make a skinny P. And let's take the S, which equals the sample count, the sample count. Double click here. And we'll just use a count equals count. Now I have to use count A again because it's count alphabet in essence. Count A because these are not numbers and there should be a hundred of them. Control shift down, enter, and we get to the hundred. We got that correct. So X, uh, uh, so this is going to be 
let's call this the yeses, and that's what we're going to be measuring in terms of a percent. We're looking at the yeses, and this is going to be, let's call it, actually call it uh, P, and then this is going to be count P, let's say count P count and percent because we'll do it side by side. So now I'm going to count uh, all of uh, the yeses. So let's also put these are the yeses. So I'll do equals count, count, and then if tab selecting the sample, control shift down, control backspace, and then we're going to say comma count if it says yes. I'll just type it in there. Criteria. Uh, there's none of them. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. Let's try it. If I say count if, and then let's make it go to this yes. Maybe I typed it in improperly. There it goes. So something happened with the way I typed it in, apparently, that it didn't like. That's okay. This is going to be 1 minus P, and this will be the count and percent and of the no's. Let's do it again. Now, obviously, if there's 100 of them, I could take 100 minus that number, but I want to double check it with another count function. So I'm going to say equals count if uh, tab range, control shift down, control backspace, and then comma. I'm going to go over to the no over here this time so I don't mistype it or anything. There's a no and enter. Count if it's a no, 18. That should add up to a total count, which we already double checked up here. I'm going to double check this 100 equals the sum should add up to 100. Now we can look at the percent. So I want to find the percent of the uh, X, uh, the percent of the P, right? The percent of them. So this equals the 86 divided by the count of 100 percentified or recognize 88%, of course. And then this one is going to be equal to 12 over 100 percentified or recognize 19, of course. Summing that up, it should add up not some, it should add up to 100 percentified or recognize. Let's add some underlines here, home tab font group, just for for formatting sake, for formatting sake. Okay, so that means that this is basically our our p bar, which is usually the mean, which equals the mean. Notice there's there's when we think of the mean, there's the mean of the population, there's the mean of the sample, and we can imagine the mean of every possible combination of 100, they're all going to tend towards the same mean. In our case, we're looking at the average with just two things. Therefore, the one we're looking at, which is the yeses, is our is going to be our mean, the percent here. That's why that's the, what's a little bit different with the binomial distribution. This percent of yes, or the percent of the factor we're looking at is what we kind of characterize as in essence, our mean that we would be taking in situations where we're not binomial, in which case we would take the average, right? So th this is going to be the level of confidence. Let's we're up in the bar now. This is an arbitrary number, but we want to make it higher this time for whatever reason. We want to be more confident because these people are like, are you sure that these people really like this stuff and they don't like all the other platforms that are doing all the all of our crazy stuff all of the it's not propaganda it's grassroots grassroots i can see the commie cash flowing in you think i don't be don't be giving me this it's crap okay okay i don't need no grassroots anyways if i was if you if maybe if you're working on apple tree roots if you are working on apple tree roots that might bear me some fruit or something, then I might be in on it. I ain't looking to get involved in your grassroots. I have my own, I can make grass by myself. And this is gonna be A divided by two, which is gonna be equal to this divided by two. 
and then we're gonna let's make all these let's percentify these percentify to recognize add a few decimals so there we have it all right and so so there is that and then so now we're going to pick up our z so if i'm looking at this 0.5 that 0.5 if we think about our graph then we're thinking basically we want a large bit in the middle 99 percent and then in the sides that would be only one percent on the sides which if we broke out to equal portions on each side because it's symmetrical would be that 0 0.005 that's going to be uh, these concepts so now we want to basically think about where that would be in terms of z's uh, corresponding to to in essence that 0 0.005 which is going to be that upper point remember and when we're thinking of it in terms of z's we can measure our our items down here either in x's or we can measure them in z's which are basically standard deviations what's the number of standard deviations okay so let's go back on over and say all right we can use our norm it's going to be a equals norm dot s where, where's my m dot s dot inverse so the norm dot s dot inverse wants the probability and we're picking up this probability now if i just do it that way i'm going to say enter and add some decimals and you can see it gives me that negative number i'd like it to be positive and be showing like the other side right so i want it to be showing the other so i'm going to click on it and say in here one minus and then enter and that'll give us basically the positive side in z's now i want to calculate the standard standard error calculation which is going to give me basically the standard deviation that we're looking for in x terms which is generally used with this formula which again is different in a binomial situation than if it was a non-binomial situation remembering also the standard deviation we can imagine the standard deviation for the the, the actual population which we don't know and wouldn't tend towards a bell curve the standard deviation of the sample which again it's not going to tend towards a bell curve because it's binomial and therefore we would only have two bars and then the standard deviation as though we had every combination of sample count of 100 out of the 1000 which we're approximating with this formula which should then approximate a bell curve and that's what we're looking for that's what this formula is doing so it's p times one minus p over n p is basically the mean or percent that we're looking at the percent yeses which is was 85 times one minus p which is basically the the 15 percent over the n square root of all that n is the sample count of 100 so let's see if we can put that in place we're going to say equals the square root sqrt with a formula and then we're going to take the square root of p uh, that's going to be this one it actually came out to 92 uh in our sample uh of the sample that we got 92 and that's going to keep on changing of course and then we're going to say times and then i'm going to say one or actually have one minus p so let's just say times one minus p which we already have right here one minus p and then i'm going to say all of that divided by n and so n is going to be the sample size of 100. now i probably didn't need like i don't really need this this one because it's going to do the multiplication before the division because i didn't have to put the one minus p so i'm going to say enter this by the way shouldn't be a nine but a p i think i just went that's not a p bob it's going the wrong way you can't see that can't you see it's going the wrong way i'm going to say home tab number group let's add some decimals and then there it is so there's our standard error okay so then we're going to say then we have the margin of error margin of error then is going to be the standard error which is like the standard deviations in x's times the number of standard deviations which we came out to the 2.5758 so let's add some decimals there doot 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 let's, let's keep it right there okay so that's our margin so now when we're looking at the middle point we have the middle point which is p and then we can measure up and back in z's or standard deviations and in 
terms of the margin of error, which is measuring the same distance, but in terms of X's. So now I can pick up my lower end my, of my range and my upper end of the range. So the lower end is simply going to be the middle point, which is currently at the 86 pull, uh, lower minus the margin of error. Boom. And percent, let's percentify it to recognize this time. So I could see it in percentages. And I'm going to say the upper is going to be equal to the middle point, which is now at the 83 plus the margin of error. And let's go to percentify to recognize, add some decimals. So there we have our range. Uh, so we're saying it's going to be, we got 84 and our range is from 74 uh, to 93 to get a confidence level of, you know, the, the 1% is the general idea. Was the actual number within the range, the actual number in our population we said was 85%. So 85% uh, is going to be in the range and the range should have a high confidence level because by random choice, it's not going to be in there uh, only 1% of the time. So we tried to choose a, 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 wide, a wider range to pick up more with a, confident, with a higher confidence level. Normally our confidence level in prior practice problems has been the, uh, just the 95% because that's kind of like the default. So let's go ahead and select all of these, make this border blue. We'll make this uh, border blue. Okay. Let's see if we can graph this thing now. And once again, I'm going to try to use my, my newer method of the graph by first plotting out the Z's. So let's do that again. I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to go home tab, format, paint to the T. And I'm first going to just take my Z's and think as though... We went from negative four all the way up to positive four. And so it'll be a more detailed, a very detailed graph because we're going to go, go negative four to negative 3.99. I'll add some decimals, adding some decimals. Let's take those two and copy it down till I get to positive four, which is going to be a ways down here. I probably could have used the sequence, but it's not too bad. Look at, look at how fast it gets there. And then it tells you where you're going. You don't need to use the sequence function for that. That's not far enough. That's not enough numbers to need the sequence. All right. And so then I'm going to say, if that's my Z, then what is my X? So the Z, this is basically saying I'm four standard deviations away from the middle point to the lower part of the graph. So I can calculate my F, uh, my X for that point by saying that's going to be the middle point, 73. Uh, plus this negative four plus the negative, which is in essence minus, and then times the standard error, which is basically the standard deviation, enter. Let's percentify that, add some decimals. I'm gonna double click on it and everything that's not in this column, which is column U, I'm gonna make absolute so I can copy it down. So in S2, I'm gonna say F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the S and the two, R10, F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the R and the 10, enter going back on it, double clicking it down, control shift down to double check that it went down. And there we go. All right. So now we have our X's and now I can calculate my P of X based on those, which is going to be our good old equals norm dot dist calculation. Where have you been? This is going to be an X comma the mean is going to be that 0.88 or 88%. I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard so I can copy that down, comma. And then we want the standard deviation, which is the standard error and F4 on the keyboard. So I can copy it down, closing it down, enter. And what am I missing? What's wrong, Excel? I need to do one more comma. It needs to be uh, not cumulative, therefore zero. Enter. Okay, so then I can percentify to recognize, add some decimals, and double click it down. Ba Boom. All right, and so that then adds up to a massively large number, but I think that's okay. I'm not going to really worry about the percent. I could like, I could get into that, but I'm really not going to worry about it as long as it's still going to make basically my bell shape, so I can imagine the X's should populate properly. 
So let's go ahead and say control shift down here, control backspace and see what it looks like when we add the data. So I'm gonna to go to the insert up top. We're gonna to go to the charts. You could make a bar chart, right? That looks like a bell shaped curve. So it looks good, it looks like, right? And then that, that, but then I wanna make an area graph. So I'm gonna select this one and let's go to area charts, area graph and do our good old area graph because we're gonna get detailed. We're gonna get fancy and fancy pantsy, putting the pleats on the pants right here. So we don't just wear any old pants. This is a special situation. We have fancy pantsy. Okay. So then I'm going to go to the data and uh, let's add the X's over here. I'm going to change the X's to be these X's control shift down, control backspace, enter or just double click. So it shows up. So that looks good. So we see it in X's. I also want to see the Z's here but I need to have some other data to do the Z's. So I'm gonna add our range, which I'm gonna put in the middle using a text thing, dynamic text field for the label, which is gonna be that we wanna have the lower bit, which is this bit, is gonna be less than uh, X, which is gonna be less than the upper bit here. Now, in order to make that a text, I have to put text around this because I just want it to be text and we do that with a quotes. And then in order to do the quotes, I have to put an and to tie it out because that's just the way the computer code. I think of it as a not an and in between those two. And then it should give me a dynamic field, but it has decimals. That's ugly. So let's go back into it and remove the decimals by saying, I want you to round it, round it, por favor, comma to two decimals, close it up. This one round it por favor please if you would to two decimals close it up enter and there we have it there we have it beautiful all right now let's do that let's actually do that with an if function so in logic test equals if there's two conditions therefore i'm going to embed an and as well and the logic test is going to be you need to have this x uh, needs to be it needs to be greater than that x needs to be greater than this lower bit and then comma next that same x also needs to be less than the upper end here and then close up the and those are the two logical tests then comma what do you want us to do if that's true excel is asking we're going to say if it's true then give me this percentage and then comma, what if it's not true? What do you want? Just leave it blank. Well, how do I do that? Well, space quotes and space, because that is how you put a text for a space, enter nothing's in it, but I think it's correct. So I'm gonna format it, percentify, adding some decimals, double clicking before I check it because we're getting risky. We're taking chances here. And then I go down and see if it did it correctly. Let's go down uh, and no, it did not. I messed up. Okay, pa, so let's go back up. What happened? Going back into it, I need absolute references. These cells are moving down and you did not tell Excel not to move it down. So in, anything that's not in my range, if it's not of, anything over here in the R's, I need absolutized, it needs to be absolutized. So there's one F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number. There's one F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and number, enter double click it back down and let's check it again check it again mistakes will happen mistakes have been made who made the mistakes hey let's not get into let's not get into the detail mistakes do happen tragedy they, they have been made and probably will be made again It'll be made, it'll be made more often. If you keep on, if you're in charge of this, I'll tell you that what, okay, let's not get, let's not get into the, to the blame game of the situation. All right, let's add then this data over here and we're going to go data. Let's add this. And then I'm going to add data. This will be the title and then we're going to say it's going to be here control shift down control backspace 
select in here to here just to make sure it shows up. And uh, wait a second. Hold on. I totally did I edit the data? What are you doing? Dude, let's undo that. Let's undo that. Okay, I'm sorry. You see mistakes, mistakes. You d Oh, all right, mistakes have happened. Let's try it again. I'm going to add the data this time. We want this bit. And then here, we're going to say from here down to here, control backspace. Oh, what? And then I'm going to go here and here till it shows up. All right, there we go. That's what we want to see. All right. All right. And then I'm going to double click in this middle bit. I want to add a secondary axis. It puts it on the right, but that's not where we want it, Excel. I appreciate you trying, but that's not where we want it. So I delete that, and then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to the second bit of data, edit that, and then I want this to be the Zs. Control shift down, click in here and back till it shows up. There it is. Boom. Doesn't show up on the graph yet, though, until I go here and say I want axes secondary axis on the horizontal but not up here not up here that's that, I don't like that I'm going to put it I'm going to go to the more options and say this one excel I want you to bring it down below so so that I can the peak of the mountain should not be interrupted by data when you're on the peak of the mountain it's like having clouds above the peak when you're tr that's the whole point of climbing the mountain so you get above the clouds and you could see clear clear sky so then i'm going to go to the insert and then i'm going to go let's put a little line here and check out and see if this makes any sense so i'm not really worried about the percentages being wacky crazy up up top because i'm really concerned with the x is because to see what is under the curve which i think should be fine right so <laughs> under this method so now we're gonna say I, i'm not so i'm not cons okay i already said that so we can say it should be within two z's 2.57 z's that's where this bit is so 2.57 to get most of the data within it so that's around right here so this looks about right if i'm looking down here at this x and then 2.57 is around here. Uh, by the way, you could make this graph super big if you want to make it like more detailed. So I could like scroll out like this and then say, I'm going to make this graph super big so that then you're going to get a, a wider range. So you can make it kind of as small as you can here so that you could still read the text and then, and then the defaults will give you a little bit more uh, detail here so that so, so the middle point uh, should be 83 right so we have 83 so that looks about the middle point true 83 it should be zero uh, in terms of Z's and then the upper end we saw in Z's in terms of X's it should be at 73 and 90 92 or 3 73 around here so it looks about right and then 92 or th oh 92 or three here so that looks about right so yeah i think the graph is doing what we want so and that could be a helpful visualization so the bottom line is crunchy roll uh is doing better again i made these numbers up but i feel like they're probably reflective of the actual situation because of the whole because of people feel like they're being preached to by the other platforms and it's getting annoying and crunchy roll i don't know that doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like the anime is doing that they're just telling very weird strange but uh but but just stories right they're just i just want to see my stories just want to watch my stories with all the pro without all the the advocacy stuff that's all anyways